Hello everyone, this is Direwolf20, and welcome to episode 28 of Direwolf20's Age of Engineering series. Dun dun dun! Today, I've got some cool stuff planned. I don't want to smelt my bauxite yet, but this should have auto-sorted and everybody should have been cool. Hey, look at that, you found places to go. Um, groovy. So there's a couple things I want to show you guys. I, I, I made this one little nifty change, which is actually pretty cool if I do say so myself. Um, I've set the miscellaneous junk chest to both insert and extract on the green channel. And I've also set it up to have self-feed disabled. What this means is that this thing will constantly be extracting anything that doesn't go into this chest anymore. Um, so with the following results, say tungsten, peridot, ardite, resonating ore, yellowite ore, uranium, these things, cobalt, I wanted to actually put in here going forward, right? Uh, so I could do that, um, and then all I'd have to do is update the this dude, and it would start extracting just those items from this chest, because now it has um, a place to go. How cool is that? So it's like an automated way to clean out the miscellaneous junk chest once I've assigned a destination for a specific type of item. Pretty cool, huh? Uh, so that is now up and running and we can see that happening. Neat. And everything else stays, right? Um, it's just those miscellaneous items that now have a new home get sorted out. Cool. It's a really easy change to make. Um, and that's pretty cool. Down here, how's everybody doing? Good. You're sag milling and your alley smeltering and we're getting items and that's what i like to see beautiful i love automation it's one thing that um drives me into modded minecraft because i love being able to automate cool designs and nifty ideas so if anything else i decide like belongs in a specific chest somewhere just go ahead and like add it to the sorting list and boom it'll automatically be pulled out of here and put somewhere else uh so today's episode um so i started reading the server guide Right, so we're currently, we, we completed automation age. Nuclear age is the next place to get into. Um, I feel like we're in a good place to jump into a new age because uh, we've, we've spent a lot of time in this age, the automation age, but to be fair, I did a lot of automating. Um, and we've gotten to ourselves to a good point where we have a really good amount of IC2 power. Uh, we have a really good amount of RF generation uh, and we're ready to move on. So the next thing I wanna get into is the nuclear age. Uh, the reason we're doing this is uh, because now uh, we can start replicating things with UU matter. So I should start working on getting the stuff I need to make UU matter. Uh, the other thing we're gonna to wanna to do though is probably have a dedicated power source for UU matter production. So what I plan to have is keep my main power machines running off of the bio generator, cool? And then what I'm gonna have set up is I'd like the mass fabricator, which is gonna be responsible for creating stuff like UU matter, um, running strictly off the nuclear reactor. Uh, and to do that, we're also gonna want probably some, some cobblestone generators and some recyclers to make scrap. So I'd like to build a specifically like 100% all the way, awesome, cool, uh, system for making UU matter because there's all kinds of good stuff you can do with UU matter in this pack. He set it up so that you can create all kinds of items straight from UU matter and gave them recipes. So for example, like we can make advanced machines, right? You know how much of a hassle this make advanced machines? It's like 20 crafting steps. You could do that with UU matter. Like boom, click, done. I have an advanced machine now. Like that's it. Um, also, we're going to need lots of iridium. So we've noticed that there's a there's a hefty investment in iridium um, in future crafting recipes. Uh, so considering we're going to need a lot of iridium, the only really good and reliable way to get that is with UU Matter. So today's episode, I'd like to start working on a nuclear reactor, which will power the UU Matter production system. And then once we've got the reactor up and running, we'll start creating the UU Matter production and all the stuff we need for that. And then we'll have some really good stuff. Um, so that's pretty much the plan. Now, in the past, you guys have seen me do nuclear reactors with fluid stuff, and that's totally doable and awesome. Um, we only have one little and eensy beensy tiny whiny little issue with, uh, with the fluid system. And that is one of the components is you need to have a steam generator, just like we have over here, right? Uh, yeah, this guy, steam boiler, this guy, electric heater, all that good stuff. The problem is um, we need to heat those if we're gonna go the nuclear reactor method with liquid heat exchangers. And liquid heat exchangers require four iridium ore each. And as I remember, I need like 10 or 12 of these, um, 
liquid heat exchangers if I want to uh, fully utilize the output of a hot liquid from a nuclear reactor. So if you guys watch my Let's Play series, remember how many liquid heat exchangers I needed? It was a lot. So um, that's not going to be the first thing. So what I think I'm going to do is we're going to get nuclear reactor up and running without the heat system. So like a straight nuclear reactor. Then we will go ahead and produce UU matter, get a bunch of iridium. Once we've got a good amount of UU matter and iridium produced, we can switch that over to the fluid version. Uh, and the fluid version will be responsible for producing hot coolant, which we'll use to bump up our EU uh, production even further to increase the speed at which we're producing. Because once we get a hot coolant reactor going, it's far more efficient uh, in terms of energy generation. Like I think I'll get, for the reactor design I picked out, it's close to, but not even 300 EU per tick, but you can get something like six or 700 EU per tick um, out of a liquid coolant one, hot coolant. So that's the plan for the next couple episodes, just as an FYI. So first things first, uh, we're going to need a nuclear reactor downstairs. And to do that, we're going to need the following things, which I'm gonna try and craft most of this off camera. Um, it might be like little intermission jumps here and there saying, oh, I did this and that, so we'll do that. So uh, reactor chambers, we're gonna need a handful of them. Uh, we're gonna need uh, the, the reactor itself. And these are all the regular recipes, so it's actually not too bad to make. Um, and then we'll need all the reactor parts, right? So the heat exchangers, right? We'll need some of these, which don't look to be too different. This looks about the same. Uh, we'll need a lot of these usually. That looks about the same. That looks about the same. Component heat exchanger requires one of these. That looks about the same. So most of these crafting recipes look unchanged, which is super good news for us because, um, yeah, they're painful otherwise. So let's come back in a moment and be ready to start crafting all this stuff. By the way, you guys might be wondering why I'm storing bauxite ore and not auto-processing it. Um, there's a note in the guide here that says you should probably think about doing that because in the future, we're gonna need a lot of bauxite. You know what else I'm gonna do while I'm waiting for something? Uh, oh, I don't have that much sand. Don't I have more sand over here or no? I do, all right, cool, awesome. Um, we might also be, I don't wanna say inadvertently, but we might, eh, no, we should be cool, yeah. We're spitting out that stuff. Sweet. So we're probably making a lot of smooth stone automatically down there. So let's get a stack of you um, and a stack of... Is that really all the Surtis Quartz crystal I've gotten? Okay. Let's get about half a stack of you. Uh, and I'm going to turn you into pure... I want to get the pure Surtis Quartz thing going. Did you make this a crazy recipe? Surtis Quartz dust. Ah, okay. So I have to dust it first. You should be able to do that, right? You should be able to do that, right? Yay! You totally can. Let's get another... I should have a stack of flint laying around that I can just drop into this guy. It just gives you a little bit of an extra output. Sweet. Um, so we're going to need Surtis Seeds eventually, and it takes like hours and hours to run. So I'm just going to real quick... Uh, drop this into a bucket of water um, and let it sit forever um, so that hopefully when we get around to the point of needing it, um, we will have it. Cool. So there's a stack of seeds. Uh, I'm going to put you away. We need a bucket, which there might be one in here. Nope. This one is junk have a bucket? Nope. Can you just make a bucket real quick? I probably had one that I just totally didn't see, but that's okay. Uh, so I'm going to pop this dude, I'm going to put him in my processing room, I'm just going to pop it into the corner over here. And remember these seeds never despawn, or at least they're never supposed to. So I should come back like, you know, in a few episodes and have that done. Um, meanwhile, processing of things, hooray. Uh, back in a sec when I've got everything I need for stuff and stuff. So if I'm not mistaken, I'll just get one of these for now, even though I have the resources for more. I think I've got everything I need. I already had some Palest Crystals and Enhanced Redstone stuff. So, nuclear reactor and six reactor chambers. Easy peasy. Uh, let's pop this dude, like, right down here. So we'll put you... Cool. So that's good. Uh, so the next thing I'm going to need is a bunch of stuff. So I'm going to need reactor plating, which is just an advanced alley. I want one, two, three, four of those. And we're going to want a lot of heat exchangers, component heat exchangers, 
and overclocked heat vents, uh, which is going to require a lot of copper plates and a lot of gold plates and some iron plates and some iron bars and some tin casings and some coils. I'll be back in a minute. So for those of you following along at home, uh, these guys go here, here, and here. All right, so I think I need 17 of these guys. So the only thing I need then would be roughly a stack of this. Why not? Uh, heat vents, 16. One more. Come on, you're killing me. Killing me. Let's make a bunch. Because why not? Literally short of one iron plate. How funny is that? But by now we should have what we need. Cool. So the 17 heat vents turn into 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. Yep, heat vents. Uh, need to be component heat vents. So, okay, I wasn't just short uh, by one. I was short by probably a lot more. That's okay, we're cool now, right? Eh, we might need more iron plates. Cooking this up. So component heat vents. Didn't I just get a bunch of iron plates? Oh, these are tin plates. Oh, look at you, tin plates. Okay, cool. So never mind, those are tin plates. Well, I need the iron plates anyway at some point, I'm sure. But let's get a stack of tin and cook you up as well. Back in a sec. Success! Uh, so for again, those of you following along at home, uh, I'm gonna put these in just so you can see where they go. So here, here, here. Uh, this kind of goes like in a diagonal type pattern if you're following it. So it's mostly like, if you, if you follow along from the top right to the bottom left, it's kind of easy to follow this pattern. And then here, 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 and then here, here, and then here. So that looks pretty good to me. Cool. Uh, yes, that is pretty good looking. Okay, cool. So that's next stage. So then I'm going to need 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22 of these bad boys, um, which needs a lot of copper plates. So if I need 22 times 8, um, wow, that's a lot of stacks. That's a lot of blocks of copper that need to be cut, but we'll take care of it. Um, and then more heat vents, which needs more iron, more of these, and more of those. Cool. So I'll be back with 22 of these in a moment. And in the middle of all this, I need to take a quick break because I'm completely out of copper. <laughs> uh, so we'll be back in a minute after I do a little intro mining. What I'm going to do for this is I have a chest. Do I have another one laying around? Nope, that's all right. Close enough. Let's uh, treat you as my currently being worked on inventory. So here's all the stuff that I've currently been working with. Uh, cool, and then I'm gonna go mining. This is my mining gear. Back in a minute after I get a bunch more copper to process. All right guys, a little off camera crafting later. Uh, cooked up ooh, decent amount of copper. Are you guys done down here? Uh, you're still cooking up the last bit of whatever this is, tin. Nice. Um, so that's cool. And then let's fill in the grid. So this one's a very much a diagonal pattern. So it just goes like this. And then uh, this one gets a similar diagonal. It goes all the way down. Uh, not you though. Um, and then here and here and then here and here so that's your pattern for those now we're going to need a few of these and a few of these um which aren't too bad because it's just this it's just going to need some tin and copper so i will take care of that on camera as well oops this was in the wrong spot it goes here all right if i'm not mistaken should have seven of these the ability to make seven of these and the ability to make five of these Perfect. That's what I like to see, guys. Nice. 
Um, and then the pattern is the bottom row gets all these guys, boom. This row, there's the component heat exchanger here, and then two normal heat exchangers go there and there. And that is the reactor that I used in my single player Let's Play series that was extremely successful. Now we just need two fuel rods. So uh, for fuel rods, we need two quad fuel rods and two dual fuel rods. Um, if we put four quads in there, it's gonna explode. And exploding would be bad because I put zero effort into protecting this thing. So if it blows up, uh, I'm restoring a backup of my world. I'm not even gonna lie. Like, like if this thing blows up, it will be world restore. Like, let's not even pretend that we're gonna like deal with that as a, as a scenario that happened. <laughs> no, that's all I have to say about that. Cool, so uh, I should. Can I hit this from here? No, he kind of needs to be hit from the front, which is kind of annoying. See how nice that is that that organized? Except for the fact that it has to be hit from the front. So I may or may not move that to a position that's a little bit easier to directly access. But for now, we're cool. So, um... Let's do fuel rod production, right? So for fuel rods, in order to get this, we're going to need to completely, oh, why are you off? Why are you not getting power? Are you not getting power again? Cause I'm gonna hit you really hard. Why would you stop magically at some point getting power? Like that fixes it and it happens in weird situations. Um, so I have to figure that out why that's occurring. Anyway, back in a sec. So in order to process the uranium that we've got, step one, we need a macerator. And I want to have a dedicated line of machines that their only job will be to process uranium. So any and all uranium we get, which we've got about a stack of, uh, will get processed by these machines. Uh, and the next thing we're going to need is an ore washing plant. Uh, and that doesn't look too bad. Cool. So ore washing plant, one, two, good. And then two buckets and three iron plates. So that's check, right? So macerator, ore washing plant. And then finally we need a thermal centrifuge, which I know I've made one of these off camera before, so it's within my wheelhouse or ability to make. It doesn't look so bad, just gonna need a little bit of effort, so I'll be back in a minute when it's ready. So cooking up diamond dust, turning it into an energy crystal with a compressor. Gonna get myself, I've got a circuit there, so that's cool, you're still cooking. Goodness, you guys take a while. Almost there. There we go. So I'm gonna need four of you. And then we should be good to make this laser gun thingy. Yes. Nice. Uh, and then we're just missing a couple of you. And this. Oh, I'm going to need a couple more of you then, aren't I? Do we have more copper cooked up into lines here? Nope. That should be cool. Uh, so I need 18 of these total. So I'm just cooking a little extra, which is fine. One more set. Boom. Nice. Oh, I can't sprint anymore. I'm so hungry. Man, all this crafting works up an appetite. Nice. Thermal centrifuge. So the other thing we need is a canning machine for this processing line. Uh, so, oh wow, am I really out of... That's funny. That's crazy, actually, that I'm out of that stuff. Uh, in fact, let's get two more blocks worth because I'm going to need a machine casing too. Uh, so you're going to need this many of that, that. You're done? Cool. One machine casing and a fluid solid canning machine. Sweet. All right. So Let's also get some item conduits and some chests. Does that sound like a plan? That sounds like a plan. Um, so let's get one of these just to be able to test it. Um, 
I don't know why you guys are in there, but that's okay. Uh, chests, that's what I wanted. We'll get two chests. All right, downstairs we go. So let's plan for where this is gonna live, right? So maybe like right along this wall. So we could have the macerator. Is that a good place for it, really? I think I should have my mass fab stuff like right around here-ish, probably. Um, so this wall should be good, right? So macerator, followed by ore washing plant, followed by thermal centrifuge, followed by fluid solid canning machine. And that should be cool. Uh, and we're gonna wanna fully automate this to the best of our ability. Um, so I'm just cleaning up my inventory just so I have a little bit of space for this workshopping. Uh, the other thing we're gonna want, just to make sure that we don't die a horrible radiation-infused death, speaking of put your experience away, direwolf, um, is we're going to need a bunch of rubber. Because I want a radiation suit. So first off, scuba is the first thing I need. We're gonna need some orange dye, which is uh, a bit of red and a bit of white, if I'm not mistaken. Mob drops, where yet? So this should, oh, that's pink, that's right. Orange is yellow dye. Yellow dye. Uh, there's some. Can I sag mill you? Because that would be cool if I can. I can! Look at that. Beautiful. All right. So, we'll see if this is enough. So for the scuba helmet, we just need a piece of glass. Really? No glass at all? And one of you. And this will protect me from radiation exposure when managing anything that's being processed by the uranium ore. Uh, and then we're gonna want a hazmat suit. We're gonna want this. We're gonna want this. And then we're gonna want rubber boots. Just needs a piece of wool. Now, is there an armor stand from... No, nah, there's really not, is there? The Bibliocraft one doesn't exist. That's a bummer. So what we'll probably want to do is somewhere along the line come up with a nifty way to store my armor. What I'll probably do is just have a chest that I'll put my armor in for the time being, and then we'll just swap it out as needed. Does that sound fair? Um, so this chest can sit here, and what I'll do is just swap out my armor as needed. So that and the boots. And just for the sake of inventory management, we'll do that. Nice. So with that on, we should be able to get these guys up and running. Now we're definitely gonna need to get um, some power down here. You guys are transmitting what? Um, MV. So if I wanted to, I could convert this uh, from MV to LV and we'd be fine for all these machines. I think that would be good. So let's just get an LV voltage transmitter transformer thingy. So I need a, another coil, two insulated tin and some wood. Two insulated tin. So there's the coil I want just to put you through here. Two rubber should be good and some wood and that should be fine. Cool. Good deal. And somehow I have an extra one of you. So if we voltage transformer that thing, like, where's my wrench by the way? I'm gonna totally need you. We just put this here and shift U, that would be good. So in theory, there should be no explosions from this. Everybody loves theories. 
Everybody loves theoretical non-explosions. So these are all the machines that need power. We'll probably have item conduits running along the back here. So let's run this out here and around any potential problems. Okay, that shouldn't connect to anything. You might connect to your electric heater there. Wow, I had exactly enough. Sweet. So you guys are all getting power and there's no explosions? Exactly what I want to see. All right, let's see if we can do this without filtering. Um, so first step of this process is to extract from here and put it in there. So you're going to be an extract on green, always active. There's nothing in there right now, right? Cool. And you're going to be an insert on green. You're going to um, turn this into this crushed uranium ore, right? Uh, so then we're going to want to extract on brown, always active, insert on brown. Cool. And you're going to wash it, and what you're going to get is this is the annoying part. Um, we get purified crushed uranium, which we want to go into the thermal centrifuge thingy, uh, and the tiny pile of dust and stone dust we want to eject and put somewhere else. So you're going to extract on blue, always active. You're going to insert on blue. Priority of negative five, so a low priority. And you will insert on blue with a high priority, but then also extract on blue, always active, with self-feed disabled. So what that should do is when you ore wash it, right, um, this stuff, it should, the first high priority purified crushed uranium is the only thing that can fit in the thermal centrifuge. It won't accept these two. So they'll go to the chest. This will go into the thermal centrifuge. And then once you've um, made this, it will extract on the blue channel and dump it into the chest. So let's see how right I am about that. So you're going to start macerating, and that's cool. And you need water, by the way, uh, from some kind of source. Don't I have water nearby? I have something. I have that. Pressurized fluid conduit. Sweet. I do have actual, actual water nearby. How cool is that? We're going to need a few more of these, though. So let's get like half a stack of you cooked up. I keep wondering like why I'm moving so slow and then I'm like, oh right, I took off that armor that makes me run fast. <laughs> Silly derpy dyer. So that's probably close enough to what I need. So a few more pressurized, we'll pop down here and we will connect this to this machine. So we'll see that this machine has my crushed uranium in it, which is what I would want. Now we just have to run this. and say you're allowed to send water. So you're getting water now, and you should be processing. Beautiful. And just because I want to demonstrate this, we're not going to keep speed upgrades in this thing for a long term, but just because we're testing right now, I want to not have to wait a long time. So this should get those things out, and the small lead and stone dust go in there, and you, my friend, have the thermal centrifuge going. Sweet. Uh, let's get a lever may exist in here. Because I want you to pretty much, you know, be kept at a temperature. Hopefully you won't mess with anybody else. So let's borrow this stuff for a minute. Put that in here. This should speed up. Uh, you're able to manage. Good. Back in a second when we're at an appropriate temperature. 
So by the way, you put an iron plate and a metal former in extruding mode and you get your fuel rods, which is what I'm cooking up now in advance of the need to do this. Cool. And you are almost at temperature. And by almost, I mean not really close. Good news, looks like we've reached temperature. So I took my overclocker upgrades out because it was killing our power. Um, and hey, you extracted your stuff. And that's putting it in there. Beautiful. So that's really good. Awesome. So I should be able to take this now because I'm wearing protection and uh, peek over to here and convert you into some of that. Nice. So what I'm gonna do is get the rest of our uranium that we have. And we're gonna have to look at getting more uranium. All I have to do is put the uranium in here and then it auto macerates it, it auto ore washes it, it auto thermal centrifuges it, and Bob's your uncle. And then we combine these things with this and we should be getting our uranium fuel rods then we just need some iron and copper plates or iron plates to get quads or duels cool so we should have uh that ability to make that so we'll do we'll get a couple iron plates here because you could always use more iron plates let's be honest and that's bronze copper let's get We'll get like that many for the coppers. You don't need too many copper plates. Maybe two, two, two blocks worth of copper plates would be good. Cool. So you're continuing to process the uranium, which is nice. You're filling that guy up, which is great. You're getting there. Get this a little bit more enriched uranium. Cool. So making progress. So in total, we need 4, 8, 10, 12. 12 uh, uranium fuel rods in order to get power out of this machine. Cool. So that shouldn't be too bad of a process. Is there any other way to get this? Uranium gives me... Oh, really? That's cool. I see two uranium converts to nine of these. Well, that's spiffy. Because uh, one thing I notice is we're getting a lot more of the uranium than we are of the tiny piles. Not that much more, but enough more. So it's six to three, so you need twice as much. Um, and when you get this stuff, you get four times as much uranium as you get tiny piles of uranium. Well, no, you don't actually. Hold on. You get almost twice as much, so it's actually pretty close. It might just make a little sense to have a crafting table down here somewhere. Just save me going upstairs. So that's two more of these bad boys. Come on, buddy. What kind of overclocker acceptance can you have? Two of them and not go too crazy with power drain? Yeah, we'll see. So the automation stuff is working, which is cool. Uh, and I am very pleased about that. Um, that's 10. In reality, we need 12. So that should be 11. 12, cool. And then we are going to need two of you. And two of you. And the way that I set mine up is that we place the big guys in there and then the small guys here. And this should output a decent amount of EU. Uh, and we will demonstrate that by grabbing a lever. And it'll tell us on the UI uh, how much EU this is producing. And then we're going to turn it off and wrap up the episode because it's that time. Uh, but if we, we activate this guy, we'll see that he is now producing 280 EU per tick. Uh, heat is not building up in the core, which is good. Turn them off. Uh, that's more than all the biogenerators combined. They're at around a 190-ish area. This is 280 by himself. And he'll last a really long time because these fuel rods will last a really long time. Almost painfully so because we're going to want plutonium. And the only way we get plutonium is by processing um, depleted fuel rods. So the only way to get plutonium is from processing those. Or with UU matter. Um, so that's going to be wrapping up point for this episode. We're going to come back next episode. And... Good, I'm not dying. We will wind up setting up 
mass fabrication. So that's next episode's goal. Uh, I will begin working on off camera all the machines we need for that. So we're going to need a mass fabricator, this guy, uh, which needs some advanced circuits, lapatron, some advanced machine casings, glowstone dust. That'll produce the UU matter that we need. And then we're going to need a scanner, uh, which is this guy. It's not bad, not bad, not bad, not bad, not bad. Reinforced glass, not bad. We can do that. Scanner doesn't seem terrible. Yeah, that's totally doable. Uh, which will be able to scan items and figure out what um, they need to do. We're also going to need a pattern storage. Triggers H7, by the way. Woohoo. Um, that's going to need modular storage, which is going to need a machine frame, but the rest of that's easy. We already know how to make a machine frame. Crystal memory, not bad. Silicon, we've been making obsidian dust we can do. A couple lasers and advanced circuits. So lots and lots of crafting, which I'm going to do off camera to the best of my ability between now and then. And then finally, we're going to need a replicator, which will take the pattern that we scanned use UU matter and EU to create items. And for that, we're gonna need some teleporters, which sound like, oh my goodness, we need a lot of advanced circuits. Lots and lots of advanced circuits for this recipe. Lots and lots and lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of advanced circuits for this recipe, but um, it's 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 gonna be worth it. Reinforced stone, uh, we're gonna to need to get a CF sprayer um, and some steel frames, but we can do that. That won't be too big a deal. CF spraying is easy and we've been making CF powder already, so we should be easy peasy with that. All right, for now, Double 20 signing off. We will come back next episode. We will do a lot of this crafting off camera between this episode and next. And hopefully next episode, we can start up UU Matter production. For now, Double 20 signing off. Take it easy.